Kia ora guys and welcome back to the Black Jersey. My name's Max, I'm the host over here at this channel and the Six Nations is only a few weeks away. So I'd probably better give my thoughts on all the squads that will be competing in this tournament as I'm going to have weekly analysis videos coming out during the tournament. Today we start with the Scottish squad. Scotland, man, they've had a rotten run of luck in recent years. Gregor Townsend has been one of their most successful ever coaches, and yet he's been at two World Cups. They've been out in the pool stage for both World Cups, so 2024, it really presents the Scots with an opportunity to really just capitalise on other nations rebuilding their teams. I'm going to slide the graphic over so we can look at their big squad. It's got plenty of awesome players, and we'll start off by discussing the fact that the hookers, well, they've been selected in a way that's spot on. Johnny Matthews finally finding his feet in international rugby after one heck of a test debut during the World Cup against Romania. Ewan Ashman's also there, very, very promising, have loved the look of him, he's going to dominate for years to come, but George Turner, I think it's safe to say he is still the number one for this hooker jersey. Wearing the number two jersey for another campaign will be awesome for him. As for the props, they are really... <laughs> Starting to look perhaps a little bit younger with Will Hood coming in. Uncapped over 130 kg. I hope he can do a massive amount of damage to the opposition for the Scots. Other than that, not really too many changes. Pierre Schumann, Jamie Batty, Xander Ferguson, and Via Pianel. All very familiar to Scottish fans. In particular, Nell, who was 37 years old now. Alec Hepburn, I've got a bit of an asterisk by him because he's played six times for England. He hasn't worn the white jersey since 2018 though, so that makes him more than eligible for Scotland, who he has ancestry from. As for the locks, I don't think there's any real surprises, are there? Richie Gray, Grant Gilchrist, both veterans, very solid players, very athletic, hardworking, exactly who you need guarding the fringes of those breakdowns. Scott Cummings should provide a good use off the bench, while Sam Skinner, the fact he can play lock and six, it's always going to be very useful. Glenn Young back in the team as well, he looks quite promising, hopefully he can get a bit more game time this time. The loose forwards is perhaps where the most controversy or controversy turns up though. I mean, Jack Dempsey, no-brainer, 29 caps for both Australia and Scotland, Matt Fagerson, another no-brainer, he has to be there, Jamie Ritchie, 40 chest caps, and the captain, he also has to be there, wearing the blind side flanker jersey, but Josh Bayliss, Luke Crosby, Andy Christie, all pretty promising with Rory Darge, probably the best Gen Z flanker in Scotland, but I don't think it's the wisest decision to leave Hamish Watson out of the team. That's very, very mind-boggling. I'm not sure what's happening over there, but the way Hamish Watson's kind of been getting phased out of the Scotland side lately, it seems a bit wrong to me. The dudes are wrecking ball with ball in hand, but most importantly, a prolific jackal threat. So hopefully Rory Dodge at number seven can step up and properly take his place. At scrum half, no changes either from the World Cup. Excellent for the continuity of this team. Scotland having all the continuity we've seen so far, it's going to give them a massive advantage for the Six Nations, particularly when you consider the fact that Ali Price, including his three matches for the British and Irish Lions, he's played 69 test caps. Ben White, hopefully he gets to retake the nine jersey as well. He'd kind of been the guy dominating the jersey for an 18-month period up until the 2023 Rugby World Cup, only to lose that jersey at the final minute ahead of South Africa and Ireland, and that really didn't work out, so hopefully he's going to get a bit of a redemption arc for himself. He'll kind of be embodying the whole Scotland squad throughout this tournament, as he will seek to get a bit of justice to his name. George Horn, very solid player, hat-trick in 2019. Just ridiculous to think he's still only got 26 test caps. Just goes to show the dominance of Ali Price since Greg Laidlaw's retirement from Test Rugby. Price may not be around for too much longer, but boy has he got some experience under his belt. Fly halves, no real surprises to see Finn Russell in there. 
76 test veteran. He's really enjoying his time at Bath from what I've seen often catching a few premiership matches um, over here in New Zealand and Finn Russell's enjoying some freedom. Hopefully he's going to just rein in it a little bit to manage the game for the Scots. Ben Healy does seem to be the next big, big thing so maybe Ireland's let one get away from them over there. Adam Hastings getting recalled as well. Very glad to see that because man he is Honestly, just had a rotten time with injury, that guy. The midfielders as well, very good to see some stability and also very good to see them get rid of the dead weight of Chris Harris. He just had not been in form for a long, long time. Um, he hadn't played well since the 2021 um, Lions tour and, well, they're doing the right thing. Camera Red Path is unbelievably promising. Seriously, he needs to get a lot more test caps under his belt because he's so good and I don't want to see this injustice being done to him over and over and over. Still need to wear Pilotto and Hugh Jones though, playing 12 and 13 together at Glasgow. Well, it just allows them to slot seamlessly into this national side. Hopefully they can give some good mentorship to Rory Hutchinson and Stafford McDowell, both new rookies. Um, Hutchinson particularly looks quite good, very powerful. If he could get a bit more distribution, he's going to be unstoppable to stop. Anyway, outside backs, absolutely gushing that Ollie Smith is injured, but hopefully Aaron Reid, who they have really just stolen from the English, is going to produce a lot of the same pace that he brings to the Sale Sharks. He's going to be a very nice prospect to examine. So with Blair Kinghorn, Darcy Graham and Duhan van der Merwe, the first choice back three, we'll see how that one goes as well. Darcy Graham, I hope he can break Stuart Hogg's record as Scotland's leading try scorer in history during this tournament. Kinghorn as well. It was horrible to see him come off injured in his 50th test, so be good to see him get some redemption. And do Hun van der Merwe need I say more, man, come on. Um, Kyle Rowe as well, solid enough player. Hopefully we can um, get a real feel of what he can add to the test arena. And Kyle Stain, well, expect to see the guy in Jersey 23 a fair bit. The captain of Glasgow, he can play at 13 and 14, so... Well, he's obviously going to bring a fair bit of experience to assist this side. What do I think of the Scottish team overall? I think this is a really good approach for Gregor Townsend to take this because we all know the World Cup draw, it was pretty, pretty harsh on particular nations and rather lenient to other nations competing in the Six Nations, I'll leave it at that. I think that by trying to get a bit of continuity with the exception of Chris Harrison, maybe Hamish Watson did have that injustice like I said, it looks very, very familiar, very, very stable and a lot of those players like the Richie Grays, the VPNLs, the Grant Gilchrist and those forward pack, they'll want to get a Six Nations under their belt before they retire. I don't think VPNL wants to retire until the Scots finally win the Six Nations. They haven't won the tournament since it was the Five Nations back in 1999, the year I was born, so hopefully they can really just, you know, take that curse off, get it out of there, and lift the title. Scotland, I've got high hopes for them, but can they win? Tell me down below in the comments, everybody. Please make sure to subscribe to me and uh, like this video as well if you did enjoy it. Definitely just continue those comments, share them, tell me what you think of the new caps because I'm very excited about Aaron Reid in particular. Definitely uh, make sure you watch my videos during the tournament as well. Cheers for watching from Max.